Hi, hi. So I'm not really a seafood fan. Besides basic fish like tilapia, cod, or salmon, I'm too afraid to venture into the deep sea. If I did like seafood though, the first thing I do is go on a day and eat 48 lobsters, two lemon drops, and a couple of sides in front of him. Mmm, cheeseburger. I'm just kidding. But that is a real story. If you've been on TikTok these last two months, you've probably heard of the 48 oyster situation. If you've somehow escaped the hive mind conglomerate that is TikTok, then let me explain. Essentially, a woman went on a date with a man and proceeded to eat 48 oysters in front of him. Pretty basic. Y'all, so today I leaked with this I met a few weeks ago out with my friends. This texting me for weeks talking to himself. Why I didn't block him? I don't know. But today I was bored and I had time. They got the best oysters in Atlanta, like hands down. So so after that, I'm like, baby, mm, what's next? What I'm about to eat? These potatoes, mm, they were so good. And this little vlog created quite the splash in the internet ocean. At first, people agreed on one opinion. After marinating though, another opinion surfaced. And I am here to discuss both. And while I do, there will be a speed draw of a piece inspired by the situation. The first and most popular conclusion was that OP was wrong. She took advantage of going out with someone as a way to eat her favorite food. It was crass and rude. She also spent the whole date filming with Flash on. It's almost offensive the way she completely disregards her dates. And with all the filming she did, one can only suspect that there was no conversation. And to top it off, she had the audacity to be surprised when he left. She behaved egregiously. Many people even assumed that she was hoping to exploit this innocent man for a free meal. People were critiquing her character and her integrity, so much so that they claimed she didn't even tip. The second opinion is in stark contrast to the first. Instead of seeing her as the villain, they revered her as a mastermind. In the video, she mentions that the man had been pestering her for a while. Despite her taciturn behavior, he kept pleading with her for this date. No. Furthermore, it can be seen that he was only interested in drinking. Now, I haven't been on much dates, on none actually, but I can say it's rather offensive to take someone's time just for some beverages. To many, it appears that she intentionally sabotaged this date as a way to lose his interest. Those are the two ideas. There's also a secret third theory that this is all actually an advertisement. OP really compliments the restaurant while reiterating that this is a weekly deal. To be fair, that does sound rather commercial-esque. But this theory has since been debunked as the location never profited from this notoriety, only posting about it once. In my opinion, I completely agree with the second team. Now this might get a little political, so if you're really young or enjoy being ignorant, feel free to leave the video now. I'm kidding, please stay on here. Maybe just lower the volume and put music over it. Okay, now with that disclaimer out of the way, there's a couple things to establish. The world has never been a safe space for women. This was a fact in the 15th century as it is now. We can only hope that this changes in the future. With phones and social media, there is a more personal coverage of the plight of the modern woman. With this, rules are established that all women follow. One of them being, you can't say no to a man. You can blame your friends or give them a fake number, but nothing is more dangerous than saying no to a man, even just for dates. Now, I don't mean to make any implications on the man's character. Maybe he is a sweet man, but I think OP noticed his incessant nature and assumed it would be safer to go on a date with him than to reject him. Then, he only wanted to get drinks, alcoholic beverages, First and foremost, this shows no chivalry. What happened to wine and dined? But also, it implies that he's only interested in getting drunk. Now, I'm not saying going out for drinks is inherently evil or anything. Many couples and friends go out for beverages all the time. I think for a first date though, it seems kind of icky. I fully think this was a test and he failed miserably. Mind you, nothing was stopping him from ordering either. I mean, the server was coming back like every 10 minutes. She wasn't ordering through telepathy. 
If he really was as interested in her as he claimed, then he would have made the most of the situation by following her lead. Or maybe if he found out he didn't like her that much, then why not tell her? I've seen multiple people ghost each other after a date, but to leave in the middle of it? He should have put his big boy pants on, ordered himself some oysters, finished the date, and ghosted her afterwards. Instead, he left mid-date. He had an expectation for the evening, and the second it didn't go his way, he bailed. And he didn't even communicate his woes until she asked him. To me, it seems that he had some not-so-nice ulterior motives, and OP saw that. For that reason, I stand with her. And also, for all the haters out there, she did tip. She even posted proof. Y'all just want to see bad bees lose, and that's not okay. <laughs> so that's my opinion. Feel free to discuss more thoughts in the comments. Um, this piece is inspired by the situation. It actually isn't the woman from the video. I only went to go look for her appearance after drawing the piece. So this was made with no inspiration at all by how she looks or anything. Um, now I knew I wanted to represent the oyster, obviously. The easiest part was using the oyster shell to create a pseudo corset. I struggled a lot with the bottoms. I ended up selling for a basic skirt. In hindsight, I should have added a slit or something to spice it up, but whatever. And I wanted all the accessories to resemble pearls found in oysters. You may notice I switched brush styles a couple of times. Um, I struggled a lot choosing it. I don't know why I always do that. On occasion, I'll redraw an entire piece using a different brush and then find out I like the first brush better, but thankfully I decided which one I wanted pretty quick. And that's this one. <laughs> I also struggle a lot with coloring. Yeah, that's it. I hope to get better, but this is this is all this is all I've got. Okay, so last second editing. Um, so sorry for the change in audio and probably change in my voice too, but I just noticed the restaurant's name is Fontaine. And so this one's for my nerds out there. This one's for my my Genshin players. It's Fontaine, that's so fun. I'm actually not on that level yet, but I'm still stuck in Sumeru. I'm sorry, that was on me. I've been here since um since the first Galapagos Island. Yeah, when yeah. But I didn't finish it because I was like, oh, this is a permanent event. And then I regretted it immediately, but then <laughs> and then I was obsessed with Genshin. And then when Inazuma finished, I didn't really like Inazuma. But after it finished, I like tapped out. I did aiming I, I was in the chasm for months. So <laughs> So that's I'm so far behind. I'm working on it. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to point that out. I didn't even realize that until like I went back to the video and it was like, oh, Fontaine's. I'm like, hold on. I know that. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Another thing to note, as I mentioned earlier, I do really struggle with coloring. And I feel like more than ever, this art piece challenged me. I was really trying to use colors to represent the inside of an oyster, the prettier part. So you can see I really messed up using pink, blue, yellow to highlight and stuff. I ended up using Gaussian Blur, which I kind of feel is like a cheat code. So if you have any recommendations, comment them below. I really need them. And ta-da! We have Miss Oyster in the room. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and comment and have a good day. Bye.